So then, just over a week ago, after pushing out a major TTK weapon balance change for Battlefield 5, DICE has announced they're going to be scaling back some of their changes after feedback from the community and analysing data that they've collected from people playing since that update went live. Now, it's not a full revert back to the values that we had before update 5.2, but in my opinion, it's certainly a better position than what we've been experiencing for the last week or so. DICE released another community broadcast for this update to the update, and they even released a spreadsheet showing the bullet to kill values of update 5.2 that came out last week, compared to the new bullet to kill values that they're going to be pushing live in a hotfix, hopefully next week. The hotfix is currently being built and it's going off for certification with Sony and Microsoft, hopefully in time for Christmas. The community broadcast also goes into detail about fixes and removals happening to the 3D spotting player acquisition icons, whatever they're called, and we're going to talk about those later on in the video. The post is really detailed, just like the last few have been, with lots of explanations about what's happening and some admissions from DICE themselves that the features and changes they made in Update 5.2 they didn't land in the way they envisioned, which is why they're now making these further changes yet again. This spreadsheet though, what I'm showing you on screen right now, any of the boxes highlighted in green means the bullet to kill values of that weapon at that range have now been reduced, meaning at those ranges the gun will have a little bit more power. Some highlights are the STG getting its four bullet to kill back between 0 and 10 meters. The high rate of fire SMGs, so the Tommy gun and the Suomi, and then weapons like the MG42 and the VGO MMGs, the FG42 and the LS26, they're all being buffed. You're no longer going to need that ridiculous 13 bullets to kill at long range. Those weapons have been buffed from 5 to 13 bullets to kill to 4 to 10 bullets to kill. Apart from the FG42 and the LS26 only needing a maximum of 9 bullets to kill. So overall, all of these weapons have now got their lethality back at close range, which I think is a good thing. And then at ranges, we're somewhere closer to where we were before update 5.2, but things will still take a little bit longer at those more extreme ranges. The M1907 SF, that was the assault rifle that DICE made act like an SMG, that's been buffed as well. It gets its four bullet to kill back in the 0 to 10 meter range, but because it fires much faster than other assault rifles, it's still keeping a more severe damage drop off with a maximum of 10 bullets to kill at longer ranges. The Mass 44 and the Turner SMLE, two semi-auto rifles for the Assault class, they're getting a damage boost up close out to 30 meters. You'll now need three bullets to kill instead of the previous four bullets, and that takes the Mass 44 out of the shadow of the AGM-42, which beat it in nearly every way in the previous update. The AGM-42 also gets a rate of fire increase to further differentiate it from those other two weapons. So you've now got more distinct options, which was the entire point of update 5.2. If you're interested in the new gun, the BAR LMG, that's being handled differently here because it's got two different fire modes. It's got a fast rate of fire and a slow rate of fire. When you've got it in fast rate of fire, which is the default setting, so when you spawn in on the map, that's what's active on the weapon the moment you start firing it. At that mode, it's a 4 to 9 bullet to kill weapon, so that matches the FG42's new balance position. When you're firing in the slow rate of fire mode, it mimics the damage model of the Masson, and it's got a flat 6 bullet to kill damage model, so two different damage models for one gun that you can flick between depending on the engagement range, and that makes it quite an adaptable weapon. Close range, you'll want that fast model for the lower bullets to kill, and at range, you want the slow rate of fire for the more reliable, more predictable flat bullet to kill model. The general outcome of these changes are that the weapons feel closer to what they were like before update 5.2, which, in my opinion, is the right direction to be going in. DICE is going to fix some of those insane outlier weapons that just felt awful, like the FG42. They're bringing them into line with the other weapons and they're shifting the entire balance back towards where they started. 
like I said, I think that's the right decision and the right direction to be going in. However, this doesn't solve the issues that DICE has now created with the core community. I've said many times before when addressing this issue that I didn't think this change needed to happen and that there were countless other issues in the game that could have been fixed or, or changed to make Battlefield 5 better and more welcoming for new players before you went and touched the weapon balance system, which I think many people in the core community would have said is one of the few things that Battlefield 5 has really had going for it throughout all of the other controversies that it's had to endure. And my opinion still remains the same there. I still don't think this was a change that needed to happen. And for a lot of players in the core community, all this situation has really achieved is more distrust with DICE again, just after the game got a really solid update with the Pacific back at the end of October. From the outside, looking in, new players are looking at a relatively messy situation, which isn't good for the game if DICE does want to attract new players. And being part of the core community, it's not particularly fun having a really fundamental element of the game, like the weapon balance, completely changed overnight when I don't think anyone playing the game was asking for that to happen. Now I'm glad we are closer to where we were before, but it does seem like that yet again, just like last time when DICE did this at the end of 2018, it feels like a lot of aggravation for no real gains here. Obviously, when the hotfix is deployed, which is likely next week, I will be testing out how things feel again because I think it's important that you test these things out, but on paper, the changes look more pleasing on the eye. It's not a full TTK revert, but it's the right way to be going, I think. Okay, on to the next thing. The community broadcast also focused on these enemy acquisition icons that DICE added with update 5.2. These are those icons that you keep seeing popping up above enemies' heads when you look near them or you look at them from certain distances. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of these changes, although to be honest, when the patch went live, DICE pretty much confirmed an hour later that these new icons were bugged and they weren't working properly, so... I kind of just didn't bother addressing them in my videos because DICE said they weren't working properly, so what's the point in evaluating them? That being said, DICE is going to be making changes to these icons in the hotfix and removing some instances where they appear. The part of the system that would show you icons when you looked near an enemy, those are being scrapped. This is in direct response to community feedback that players didn't like icons appearing all over their screen when an enemy was in their peripheral vision or not in the center of their screen. Those are being removed with the hotfix, which is great in my opinion. And then the other part of the system where you get icons appearing when you're looking almost directly at an enemy, and that's to say they're somewhat in the middle of your screen, those are being toned down. This is the part of the system that did exist in previous Battlefield games like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4, but here in Battlefield 5 the system was kind of amped up a little bit and it was kind of overreacting to certain things, so DICE is making changes here. The activation range for those icons is being lowered to 20 meters. DICE is improving the activation detection around when players aren't truly visible, so maybe they're obscured by low cover, as the player is here in this example, and they're lowering the activation angle of these icons as well. So now you can see that your aim needs to be nearly directly on an enemy for those icons to show up. DICE is going to be including fixes for these icons showing up through fences, walls, and smoke in the hotfix. That wasn't intended. That's something else that the community noticed with update 5.2. That wasn't working, and that was part of the reason that I didn't evaluate these changes, because I knew they were broken. So it's good to hear that DICE is on top of that, and for the Xbox One specifically, DICE will be fixing the entire spotting system, because apparently at the moment, you can just spot people through any solid object, which isn't good. That will be fixed in the hotfix as well. And one final thing, the end of round screen not showing up and it could not fetch your report kind of thing, and items not unlocking. I know a lot of people have been dropping comments on my videos about these issues, and yes, it is extremely annoying, so DICE will be fixing that in the hotfix as well. I'm really hoping here that after this hotfix goes live and some of those controversial changes made with update 5.2, they're somewhat scaled back for the Christmas period, that DICE can take this as a real learning point 
and realise that making such wide-sweeping changes that completely change how the game plays is not a great idea. The whole update felt rushed in my opinion, like the changes have kind of just been thrown in without much testing. I don't know whether that is the case or not, but update 5.2 was supposed to be another really promising one for the game, with the introduction of Wake Island and the continuation of the Pacific chapter. And the Pacific has been a really bright moment for Battlefield 5, but instead 5.2 became another bad point of DICE's own creation. They implemented some really risky systems and pretty much all of them backfired. Personally, I'd like to see DICE go further and push right back to the pre 5.2 values for weapon balance and TTK, but for now, over Christmas, I'll take this scale back and I'm gonna go and have some fun with the new map and the new weapons that we're getting. I want to have a nice relaxing Christmas and I know that most people out there do as well so I'll take the changes that we've got here in this hotfix and then we'll come back in January and we'll see what happens from there. If we see more scale backs then great. If this hotfix feels okay which at the moment we don't know because none of us have tested it yet then that could be good as well but we are moving in the right direction so over Christmas I'm just going to try and enjoy myself. But that's about it for now. I'll bring you more information on this hotfix once we know what's happening with it, and I'll cover off the new weapon balance TTK values when they go live next week and give you my opinion on them. But for now, put your thoughts in the comment section down below and let me know what you're thinking, whether you think this is good or bad. All opinions are welcome down below in the comment section. Drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. The dislike button is there if you didn't. And until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.